The best high school basketball in the state of Texas is played right here in Dallas. Just last month, the boys basketball team at South Oak Cliff High School was crowned state champions for the third year in a row. A big congratulations goes out to everyone on the Golden Bears basketball team. The achievements at South Oak Cliff are just a small portion of the many exciting things happening in the Dallas Independent School District. Join us, students from throughout the district, for a unique perspective into our schools. It's going to be a fun and interesting journey on a show we like to call School Zone Dallas. Dallas. The John Eagle family of dealerships is proud to sponsor School Zone Dallas, a showcase of DISD's successful commitment to prepare all students to graduate with the knowledge and skills to become productive and responsible citizens. I'm Alvaro, a junior at Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. And I'm Hannah. I'm also a junior at Booker T. Welcome to School Zone Dallas. We're hosting a show from El Ladio Martinez Learning Center in West Dallas. Here, art is integrated into everything the students do. You notice it immediately when you walk in the school. We'll talk more about El Ladio Martinez's approach to visual art later in the show, as well as meet some of the students and teachers who are making a positive impact in Dallas ISD. And throughout the show, we'll introduce you to some of the district's top students, just three of the many students whose achievements, both academically and in the community, paint a very promising future ahead. Some of the students from this year's graduating class from Dallas ISD schools have been accepted to some of the top colleges in the country, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, just to name a few. But hey, for now, let's meet an impressive collection of middle school students with a dedication to discipline and a brand new national title to show for it. Here's Janet with the story. Hi, I'm Janet and I'm at Marsh Middle School with the Leadership Cadet Corps, which is the middle school version of what JROTC is on the high school level. And here at Marsh, it's the hottest ticket in town. Drop and give me 20, mister. Did you know that Dallas ISD has more middle schools with LCCs than any other district in the state of Texas? You call that a push-up? The cadets at Marsh wear many hats. LCCs raise and lower the flags, are in charge of morning announcements and the Pledge of Allegiance, distribute books at the beginning of the year, and monitor distribution throughout the year. Train your recruits, and that is just the beginning. No wonder so many students want to be a part of this team. There are kids in here because they want to be identified of being in some prestigious organization as we feel that we are. They want to be a part of it. the word of the uniform, the ribbons and the awards that they get that they were able to wear and display. Helping students to become good citizens is what the program is all about. Each year, the cadets complete a confidence course at Camp Wisdom, a Boy Scout camp on the edge of South Dallas. It's a challenging experience that teaches students to trust in their own abilities and how to be a better member of a team. Uh, I decided to go into ROTC because most of my friends were in it and they told me it was a great experience and I wanted to have the same great experience as, as well. I was a part of the track beam and the object of it was to get around holding hands without falling off. The thing I like the most about Camp Wisdom, I like the power pull because when you get to the top, you, it's exciting and you have to trust yourself to jump off and grab that ring. This is something that everybody can do and they can participate in and become a team and grow together and learn things together. Respect, integrity, honor, leadership, and uh, some key traits come out, of, come out of kids from this program. But basically, we develop good citizens. For the last eight years, cadets have collected clothes, shoes, and toys to donate to the North Dallas Shared Ministries. 
This year, they collected over 11,000 items. Cadets loaded up a school bus, took the items to the center, and spent the day helping out. We help organize things, stack things, just make the place look presentable and nice. I highly recommend it for anybody that's coming to ROTC in middle school. The community service project that we do here at the school is always a give back. We have to give back. You know, we're coming here 185 days a year and we're doing our thing. It, well, we got to give back too. So we do community service here at the school. Everything the cadets do around the school makes a positive impact. And of course, the cadets are seen as role models. And the biggest event of the spring was the first ever National Middle School Drill Competition. Districts from as far away as Houston, Oklahoma, and Kansas sent their top teams to this best of the best competition. Way to go, Marsh Matadors, for winning the first ever national title. Not only do students learn leadership skills, but they give back to their community as well. Look into it at your school and see what all the fun is about. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Janet. Campbell High School has a shining star in senior Andre Esme. Andre came to America in 2004 from Jamaica. He's 11th in his class, involved in track, and loves to play soccer. Andre tutors kids in the PALS program and is in the National Honor Society. He's taking AP Chemistry and Physics and plans to major in Aeronautical Engineering at the University of Texas in Austin. School Zone Dallas honors Kimball High School and its star senior, Andre Esme. You're watching School Zone Dallas, and we're both students in the Dallas Independent School District, where this year alone, 13 schools were named exemplary and 67 were named recognized by the Texas Education Agency. The schools were honored at a special ceremony sponsored by IBM for their accomplishments. With 80 schools fitting into these categories, Dallas ISD has more recognized and exemplary schools than any other district in the state of Texas. And it's easy to see why when you see our next story. Here's Trevon and Rudy to introduce us to a group of talented and articulate students who can more than hold their own in a courtroom. Rudy? The inner workings of the American justice system. It's complex, competitive, and intense. Students throughout the district at 13 participating high schools are finding all of this out firsthand. It's mock trial. The high school mock trial program is, is a competition of high school students who try a case. Basically what it is is students who act the roles of attorneys and witnesses to try a case to conclusion. This year, the top two teams in Dallas ISD hailed from Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts and Trayvon. Thanks Rudy. And from here at Dallas ISD's original magnet school, Skyline High School, they will be joined by Woodrow Wilson High School at the Mock Trial State Competition held right here in Dallas. Sponsored by the Dallas Bar Association and the Dallas Bar Foundation, this is the 29th year for the tournament in the city. But the journey to the state started many months ago, all the way back in October, when teams throughout the state were given a single case to study, one that is as interesting as it is complex. The case we're working on right now involves a nurse who has been accused of homicide. There's sibling rivalry, there's old high school uh, drama. drama, there is negligence, malpractice, there's everything. Tons. And a few red herrings. And murder. And murder. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Well, currently I'm working on my prosecution closing. I'm trying to trim it down because we only have four minutes, and then I use one minute for my rebuttal. Dr. Chris, I love public speaking. My trial gives me the opportunity to do that, so I really enjoy doing it. You convicted and find it guilty of murder. To be part of the mock trial team, it's definitely challenging. It takes up a lot of time, but once you get into it, I mean, you just learn so much. Objection, Your Honor. Not responsive. Your Honor, the witness is... This actually requires a team effort in which you as an individual have to, have to get along with everybody in the group. Together, you work to win the competition, and if you don't win the competition, you know, it's just not your fault, you know? It bears on everybody. A key component to any team's success when dealing with something as complicated as this is outside help from real-life attorneys. 
lawyers from the community that volunteer their time to mentor students. Okay, so here's it. You get the picture. I've coached the Montreal team for five years because every year I see the girls and young men develop more and more. I've seen them develop greater confidence, discipline, commitment, and teamwork. And those are skills that I think they can take with them throughout life. Now we will present you. I'm a volleyball player and I get really competitive and Sloan Rollins has taught me how to be competitive intellectually. State is like district 10 times faster. It's the cream of the crop school, the best school statewide. I was told it was going to be a whole new different ball game, and it really was. I mean, the competition there was just, just blew my mind. They want you to have a verdict of not guilty with a picture of a plant. Objection, Your Honor. This you line. have prepared stuff that you memorize, but then you also have to learn to think on your feet. You have to be able to listen to what they say and respond to what they've said. Over to Washington. I have been a sponsor for 14 years, and to see how well the students perform is just, it's just unbelievable. Dallas Skyline. Next year I'm gonna do it again because it's a real eye opener to what we can do, you know. This is more of a privilege than, you know, a job to me. It's case closed for the mock trial competition this year in Dallas ISD. In just a few months from now, the process will begin again with the Fresh Case, featuring talented students out to make their team and their school proud. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Trayvon. And I'm Rudy. Back to you, Hannah Navarro. Thanks, guys. We're here at Eladio Martinez Learning Center in West Dallas. A major source of pride here is their decorated school band that performs several times a year in the community. Sounds great! Just like the Martinez Band, students throughout the district are more than willing to get involved with and experience new things. In our next story, we'll learn how Dallas ISD is one of the only districts in the state where students are learning the language and culture of Russia. Here's Matthew with more. Oh, привет! Меня зовут Матвей. That's Russian for, hi, my name is Matthew. Okay, so I'm not really Russian, but I'm playing one of my school's musicals. Here in Dallas, hundreds of students are studying Russian this school year, but not just the language. They're also learning about Russian history, culture, literature, and the arts as well. Nearly 170 million people speak Russian worldwide, with more than 700,000 in the United States. And at least 10,000 people speak Russian in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Ready, go. Uh -huh. Through funding from a U.S. Department of Education grant, Dallas is one of only a handful of school districts in Texas that offers Russian. Compared to our English alphabet with 26 letters, students who study Russian must learn 33 letters of the Russian or Cyrillic alphabet. What a challenge. They look at the alphabet and think, what is this? And they, they're like at zero. And the joy is every time I come, they learn more and more and more. At Travis, they decided it should be part of the social studies curriculum. And so the teacher integrates it in. And at Stone, the tag teacher does the same thing. So it becomes very interdisciplinary. It's part of the curriculum instead of just an extra thing or an enrichment. I've learned how to count to 10. And I've also learned how to write the letters in Russian and which ones are vowels, which ones are consonants. The children have really gotten into the Russian language and studying it. And at Travis, we're always looking for something that's an extended program, and this just fit the bill. When they first heard that they were going to get a Russian classes, uh, there were kind of puzzled looks. They didn't have an idea of where we were going with it. But once we got busy with the, with the classes, the excitement just soared. When you study a foreign language, it, it can be abstract. The students can think, who are Russians? But by them performing in the Russian festival, they got a chance to perform with Russians, in front of Russians, and they got to see Russian performances. So they actually get to integrate in the culture, and that's the, the great part of that. I can't think of a more wonderful experience for them to actually get to meet dignitaries from Russia.
and they were talking with Russians and they were asking them questions about the languages. They looked at what they were studying. They gave them gifts and presents and so they actually met Russians. They studied the people, they studied the traditions and we visited a Russian restaurant where they got to taste Russian cuisine. It was great. Some of it I was like, okay, I'm not eating that, I'm not touching that. But then when you taste it, it doesn't taste that bad. And most of it tastes really, really tasty. One of the things about Russia that really interests me is the food. Look at all this. There's borscht, galopsi, pelmini, none of which I know anything about. Let's start with the Russian potato salad. Shkolnia zona dalisa, ya matve, balshoi spasiba. Kingston High School's Ruth Medina is number one in her class, president of the National Honor Society and secretary of the Future Teachers of America. She's a member of Kingston's mock trial team and tutors other students at her school. Ruth loves to read and is a book club member at Kingston. She's taken AP courses at Kingston and will pursue nursing at the University of Texas at Arlington. School Zone Dallas congratulates Pinkston High School and its top senior, Ruth Medina. This is School Zone Dallas, your inside look into the positive people and places in Dallas ISD. And here at Eladio Martinez Learning Center, every corner you turn, you encounter another dazzling display of student art. Art is an important focus here at the school, and the benefits students get by expressing themselves creatively is almost immeasurable. Let's join Pooja, where it all happens, in the art room, where paintbrush meets paper, to tell us more about the importance of art instruction here, as well as throughout the Dallas Independent School District. Hi, I'm here at Eladia Martinez, where art is a hands-on experience. Stick around to find out more. Eladio Martinez, they obviously take tremendous pride in the artwork created by students, and they should. The school is one of only two from Dallas selected to participate in Arts Education Day at the State Capitol in Austin. The project that the students worked on for Austin was a combination of music, art, drama, and movement. When we went to Austin, my favorite thing was to meet one of the representatives and to look inside the Capitol. The other Dallas school invited to Austin was Molina High School in Oak Cliff. Well, cultural programs, I believe, are very important uh, to teach students to honor our heritage because when we know where we came from, it points to where we can go. Uh, everyone needs to know their roots. I think arts is very important in the schools because, well, first of all, it promotes exercise for kids. It teaches them about their culture and their background. While some Dallas students are already receiving statewide recognition for their art, arts education throughout the city is about to get a big boost through, get this, an eight million dollar grant from the Wallace Foundation. This grant will increase the amount and quality of arts education in Dallas. The Dallas Arts Learning Initiative, uh, DOLLY we call it for short, is a collaboration between the Dallas Independent School District, the City of Dallas, and the Cultural Arts Community of Dallas. And the Cultural Arts Community is basically represented by Big Thought, which is a nonprofit organization here in town who is managing the project. When you put the additional art and music teachers in our schools along with all the private uh, sector funding coming from the Wallace and, and other sources, uh, it's going to be a somewhere between 35 and 40 million dollar project over the next three to four years. This grant will enable the district to hire 140 new certified music and art teachers over the next six years, including 60 who have already been hired. And by 2009, every Dallas ISD elementary school will offer 45 minutes of art and music each week. That's a cool deal, especially since a recent study shows that schools that have higher levels of student participation in fine arts receive higher academic ratings and have lower dropout rates. When the kids get to come to art, or they get to go to choir, or they get to go to band, or they get to go to bells, they get to be who they really are. They get to feel the spirit of creating. It is indeed an exciting time for arts education in Dallas. And over the next few years, with the Dallas Arts Learning Initiative, it is only going to get better. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Pooja. 
South Cliff High School's Chastity Smith is seventh in her class, president of the Drama Club and Spanish Honor Society. She is a member of Sox UIL 1X Play Ensemble, a varsity cheerleader and mentor to other teams at her church. Chastity is being recognized at the Regional Baptist Women's and Girls Conference as the most ambitious youth. With $30,000 in scholarships, she will attend Baylor University and pursue a teaching degree. School Zone Dallas salutes South Oak Cliff High School and its superstar senior, Chastity Smith. Here on School Zone Dallas, we like to feature people and places with unique stories to tell. And our next story is no exception. Now, let's join Paula, who's about to go a little bit country out at Skyline High School, where not one, not two, but three bona fide country music stars are among the school's alumni. Here's Paula to fill us in. Hey everyone, when you think of schools in Dallas that have successful alumni in the music industry, you automatically think of Booker T. Washington High School for the performing and visual arts. But if you want to find the home of country music in North Texas, look no further than Skyline High School. I got a brand new girlfriend. Steve Holly graduated from Skyline in 1990, and this song was number one on the country music charts this fall. But he's not the only one. has had songs climb to as high as number four. And if that weren't enough... There's the first ever rapping country star, Cowboy Troy, who graduated Skyline 1989 and created a genre all his own called Hick Hop. Six foot five inch Cowboy Troy is almost as famous for hosting a show on the USA Network called Nashville Star. So what is it about this place that's made it the Texas capital of country music? After all, I've been going to school here for almost four full years. Not once have I seen a cowboy hat. Could it be the water? I don't know exactly what's going on in Skyline other than that uh, Skyline High School is a place that really fosters uh, learning and imagination and really encourages people to kind of stretch out and do some things that are maybe not considered uh, mainstream and I think that's probably why you have you know the three of us coming out of Skyline High School. Skyline was like this cool school you know this you know you drove around the, the campus and you see airplanes and like doesn't seem like a high school more like a college you know I just couldn't wait to get there I have great memories of school and coaches, principals, teachers that were all supportive of students and all, you know, wanted to see us succeed and I felt that. To try to find a common thread among Steve, Daryl, and Cowboy Troy, we went back to their school yearbooks and found that each of them were involved in sports. Each one had Texas basketball legend J.D. Mayo coach them along the way. Daryl was a very good student, very popular as well, received several awards. Uh, while he was here at Skyline, he played football. He was very involved in our Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, Cowboy Troy played uh, basketball and soccer. He was involved in our language cluster. He speaks seven languages. Steve Holy graduated in 1990. He played uh, baseball and hung around the gym quite a bit. He was also in my U.S. history class. And he was almost like a, like a guardian over me. He just kind of sensed, you know, things spiritually about me and my family. He's always been one of those people that he tells you exactly what he means. He always tells you the truth about stuff, and uh, he's always honest with you, and he's a great person. We try to not just teach U.S. history or teach basketball, but we really try to reach to the heart. Our goal is to change lives, and we do that one person at a time. Both Steve and Daryl are constantly performing. In 2006, Steve had a national tour, which will likely continue this year. Daryl has opened up for numerous country legends and is now headlining mostly throughout Texas. Cowboy Choi will continue to host Nashville Star, as well as maintain a very busy tour schedule. So the next time you hear a country song on the radio, chances are it's somebody from Skyline High School. Me, I'll see you on the Country Music Awards. From School Zone Dallas, I'm Paula.
Thanks, Paula. Well, that's all the time we have left for this edition of School Zone Dallas. We'd like to thank Principal Ms. Rosa Peña and everyone here at Oladio Martinez Learning Center for their gracious hospitality. We'd also like to thank Dallas ISD grad Mr. John Eagle and the John Eagle family of dealerships, without whose support tonight's show would not have been possible. Thank you so much, Mr. Eagle. And thank you for watching. We leave you tonight with Charlinda, who will show us a special way a Dallas ISD parent and his third grade daughter are getting students at her school fired up to take the tax test. Until next time, we'll see you right here in the zone. Thanks, you guys. I'm here at Phyllis Wheatley Elementary, the home of the Spartans. Wheatley is a Dallas ISD exemplary school, and it shows. One Wheatley student who's doing her part to help classmates make the grade is Autumn Mayberry. Let's just say this third grader has a way with words. My check. This is the 2007 version of Time Zone. Well, Autumn Mayberry is one of our third grade students, and her dad is Joseph Mayberry. And so we talked about how the students seem to really embrace rap and it's easy for them to catch on to the lyrics. He then came up with the tax and he knew it would be something that was catchy. I'm gonna try my best so I can pass this yeah, test. I, I, I see it and believe it, so I'm going to achieve it. Committed by my work, little mama's in the time zone. Math and read it in the science gonna smash zone. Pistol full of knowledge on my brain's much smarter. Mr. Mayberry has a talented daughter. It's a little nervous at first, but once you get used to it, it's really fun. When, it's, when I say um, I'm, I can believe it, when it, if you achieve it, you just have to believe in yourself. Well, try your best on this test and get that three digit number. It's just in her heart to do it. You know, she doesn't, she doesn't show me any nervousness either. You know, we come in the studio and it's time for her to mic up and, and record a song. She's just with it. She's just naturally able to do it. I think this is something I might want to continue doing in the future. We're still in the time zone. That rap is all that. It's good to hear such a positive rap song that promotes higher achievement and the importance of passing the tax test. Phyllis Wheatley Elementary, keep up the good work. For Schools on Dallas, I'm Charlinda. I'm gonna try my best to pass the test. We're still in the time zone.